Hi right, guys, a little update. I've stripped it down, cleaned it all up. This has come up very nice after I washed it out. Um, got the wire buff on the grinder and give it what for. And it's come up very nice. Some very good solid windings in here. Four of them. This is our armature and rotor. I have managed to get all the brushes out in one piece. Two of them were very stuck. Those two rusty ones there. These two came out fairly easy. They are all in one piece. Um, oh, here's a little bit of trivia for you. So this generator was made for the American Army during World War II and the parts, these are made in Germany. How ironic is that? Send us your bits and we'll blow you up. Um, I've also completely stripped this down, cleaned it up, got it all working, had to replace a couple of the wires and the amp gauge. I've just got a temp one sitting on there, the other one the needle's gone bye bye. Um, this little contactor here I'm really not sure what this has to do with it. Here we have a, um, this is just an inductor, one single winding. It's got about, uh, well you can see the thickness of the copper down there. It's about two and a half mil. Wound up and down two layers on an e-core. And then goes into one side of this. And it's wound two more times around this bobbin, which I'm guessing is acting as an electromagnet, pulls that down. So the um, power from the generator actually hooks up to it this side, goes through this big inductor, through this second inductor, and then when it pulls this down, continues on through the amp meter and out to the battery. I really don't know why they have this um, big inductor or what its purpose is. It is also hooked up to this box here which is bridged from the input of the generator across to the output of these contacts. So. Uh, Maybe someone can give me some hints on why it's set up like that. I'll just run through it again. It comes from the generator onto this pin through this big single wound inductor or single wire inductor and then through this other bobbin inductor which I believe is an electromagnet to pull the contacts down so the current continues on through here through the amp gauge back out to the battery positive but it's also bridged by this box here and I can't read the writing on it, it's too far gone I also have this wire wound pot, a very large one and it goes from 0 to 5 ohms now that it's all clean and freed up one side of it is grounded and the other side goes to this small red wire which goes into the uh, windings and then back to ground so not quite sure what that's for I believe um, it is to increase or decrease the current produced by the generator the dilemma we have with the whole thing is the motor down there in the box is totally shot the conrod is bent the piston is smashed a big gouge inside the bore. So unless anyone has some parts for a 1943, it's called a Pico or a Pecan engine or something like that. Um, looks very similar to a Briggs and Stratton but it's not a Briggs and Stratton, I can't quite read it. But yeah, something like Pico or Pecan engine. Um, so unless you've got any bits for one of them laying around, I think we might be shit out of luck. 
The good thing is, however, these four holes in here and that little boss that sticks out there just so happens to be exactly the same as that stud pattern and the inside of the bearing carrier on this new motor I got. It's a bit dusty, yes I know, but it's new, hasn't been started, as you can tell by the exhaust. Um, this actually bolts straight on there. The only problem is the taper is the right taper for the rotor, but it is about an inch too short. This needs to sit about another inch further out here. So we would have to extend the crankshaft. Second option is I cut the old crank off the motor and make up a bearing carrier with a couple of bearings in it and a steel plate to bolt on there and we simply make a standalone unit which we can couple um, any motor we wish to, whether it be an electric motor just for some mucking around or a petrol engine, gasoline engine um, or we could do something really stupid and uh, try and get the electric motor to run itself and generate some power back to the battery and see uh, what happens. Of course we know that's probably not going to happen but who knows. So that's where we're at. So I'm after some um, suggestions. I have this box is all ready to go. Switch is now good. I took that apart, clean the contacts. And the pot's all good. This um, condenser checks out okay. So do these two. One actually had a broken eyelid on it, which I'll have to solder a new one on, but that's no problem. Um, so, so far, we're all cleaned up, ready to put it back together without an engine or anything to put it on. Right, well that's it for me, um, chuck your thoughts my way guys, and we'll see what we come up with, cheers.